Hey, welcome to a Geometry Nodes tutorial. Today, we're going to be having a look at how to actually generate custom shapes. Um, kind of a simple way of doing it anyway. We're basically relying on sine and cos, but I just want to encourage anybody who is a little bit uncertain of maths. The math isn't that difficult today. I'm literally going to be telling you two functions to use, so you don't really need to understand them, although I will draw a picture of how they work, but it's fairly straightforward. You just have to remember to use them, not necessarily how they work. So this kind of follows a lot of my experiments recently, which have been around this kind of spirograph stuff. I'm basically going to be showing you how to make a spirograph today. And you can do some really cool stuff with spirographs, right? You can do kind of the basic spirograph stuff, or you can do more complex spirograph stuff, which is looks less complex, but the uh, getting all of these different offset curves and things is a little bit of a, well, combination of luck and patience. So let's jump into it just jump into my geometry nodes workspace. If you don't have one of these, I recommend you set one up. I imagine 2.93 is gonna have a geometry nodes workspace, but this is just how I have mine set up. Let's add an object, add a new geometry nodes tree to it. And let's come in here and add some things. If you have been following my toolkit updates and what's going on with that, there's gonna be a shortcut for it. Like there's gonna be a proper add-on with everything packaged together and a menu category, sorry. So everything is gonna be in the same place and easily grabbable like you just grab a cylinder and uh, be generating one of these cylinders which is pretty cool I've been using this and it's currently working pretty well so I've got a little bit more to do with packaging it up but that should be in the next few weeks that should come out first of all if we want to draw anything the best way to do it is with a line so let's grab a line node and there we go got a line and it needs to be offsetting each point by one meter one whole meter and the reason is because we don't actually want the line we want the positions we want to generate an index so what i've done here is i've got my line and i've got a separate xyz i'm going to take our position attribute and we're going to take the z because that's where the offset is and let's just write this to index so now what we have is an attribute in here a float attribute that just increases by one for every new point that's exactly what we want for an index and that basically allows us to do a different thing per step or one more of the same thing per step and that's really useful so you could turn 90 degrees for the first step and then 90 degrees for the next one 90 degrees for the next one because you would just take 90 degrees multiplied by the index and then that would be your rotation or whatever it is so great for doing more advanced arrays and things like that in our case we want to use this index to draw a circle a circle first because that is kind of the most simple way and also it means that we can do more complex things like the spirographs that i just showed you and uh, you can actually draw pretty decent estimations of all regular polygons we have that index value and we need to do a little bit of maths first grab an attribute math node and we're going to take the function change it to sine and we're going to take our index and we're just going to write this to x new attribute called x is using sine and then we're going to take another math node and we're going to change it to cosine so now we have cosine we're taking the index again and we're going to output here to y so now we have x and y and we can use a combine x y z just to combine these together so attribute attribute going with the x and y and let's write this to position so now what we have is a unit circle a circle with a radius of one. Now we do have a little bit of overlap here um, and that's just because our index values go above the value that we want them to go above, right? So right now we can see that it's, uh, it comes around to the top and it almost closes and then it just overshoots. So why is this? Why does this work? Why can we even draw a circle in this way? Well, a sine wave looks like, well, something like this, right? So it goes up and then it goes down. It starts at zero, goes up to one is here and it goes down to minus one here. And this is all over the distance of two pi, right? So two pi is our length here. Our cosine graph looks almost the same. Let me do it in a different color. So it looks almost the same, but it is offset by 90 degrees. So cosine looks like this, right? It starts at one, comes down like so, and then it comes up here and it finishes at one. So offset by uh, 90 degrees, we call that out of phase. And this allows us to draw a circle. Right, so if we were to just look at our sine graph here, sorry, it's a bit of an angle. If sine is our x transform, it's gonna go from zero over to one and then back to minus one and then back to zero. And for us to turn this line into a circle, what we want to do is we want to start high with our point up here. So we need to start at one and then we want to come down to zero, right, down to zero. And then we need to come down past zero, down to minus one. And then we need to come back up to zero 
and then up to positive one again. So that's why it works doing this with a sine and a cosine because you can basically they're offset by those degrees which means that you can put them together as x and y end up with a circle. So it's kind of magic. If this doesn't make sense, if you don't understand the maths, honestly don't worry about it. I did not understand why this worked for so long. It's taken me quite a long time of just doing this repeatedly before I was like, oh, that kind of makes sense actually. I understand now that I've, now that I've done it this many times. We need to do a little bit of modification here, right? So let's take this back to 10. And you can see that we are finishing a little bit past. Our index, our top index value is nine, and that is too far. And if I reduce this down, this is where it's closest when our top index value is six. The indices start at zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six is seven different numbers. If a full circle is two pi, right, for the full length of that sine and cos wave, two pi long, then we need to do two pi divided by seven. And this is gonna give us one step and then because we're working with indices, which allow us to basically do a different thing per step or one more of the same thing, then we can take one step of two pi divided by our count. And then the second one is going to be two times that, which will take us to the next position, and the next position, and the next position. If we multiply our index by two pi divided by seven, then we should end up with even spacing. So let's test this. We have an input value here. This is going to be our count number, change this up to seven. And then I'm going to grab a utility math node, just a regular math node. Really important here, the order that you do this in. So we are dividing 2 pi, or we can write tau, T-A-U. So 2 pi divided by 7. Always do it in that order. If you do 7 divided by 2 pi, it will not work. Um, so if it looks like it's overshot or it's gone a bit weird, just double check that you're doing your divide in the correct order. So I have my attribute math node here. Set to multiply, we are multiplying our index by a float value like so. And I'm just going to call this lowercase i, right, just to show that it's uh, it's a custom index. It's one that we have modified. And now instead of index on my other ones, I just want to copy that i across like so. You can see if I increase this, our spacing stays more or less the same. We do have a little bit of wiggle in there. And that's just because our count here is an integer value. So it's a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And our divide down here, this is taking a float value. So like 9.2 currently. The way for us to fix that is just to change that to a basically an integer to floor it. So we just add another math node, set this to floor before the divide, before the divide. And there we go. So now we have a nice predictable way. Now, if you don't need lots of vertices, then this is fine. You have your positions already for uh, basically a circle tool, right? With different number of vertices. However, if you do want to have lots of vertices, and the reason that you would want this is if you were wanting to render this and you have an instance object, which is how I did all of my spiral graph bowls, this is the method. So we want lots of points, but if we don't want it to stay circle, then we need to remove a little bit. So from a triangle, we have three bits that we need to remove, right? So zero here, we need to remove a little bit, and then we need to be removing a lot, and then a little bit, and a little bit, a lot, a little bit, a little bit. You get the idea. Let me just show you something. If I had a circle, and let me just make a marker on one side. If I put this here, the distance from the, the axis is little. If I rotate it, it becomes a lot. And as I come back down, it becomes little again. Why do we want to know that? Because if we have a circle that goes around three times in the same amount of time as we go around one on this big circle, and then we add the position or we subtract the position either way, then what we have is a triangle or an approximation of a triangle. It's gonna to need to shut my curtain a little bit. Absolutely baking. It's really, really hot today. It's very sunny. Okay, here we go. We've got our circle, we want to copy these four nodes, the multiply, sine, cosine, and combine, duplicate these forwards, join these up into the same chain, and everything's just disappeared. And that's just because our index value here is being multiplied. So we haven't actually changed anything right now. We're making one thing and then we're remaking it at the same time, exactly the same. This isn't quite what we want. We want our second value to be a little bit different. So let's take our, well, first of all, let's take our first combine x, y, z, and let's rename this one to big. This gives us the positions of our large circle, our main circle. And then the second one, instead of working with index, we're going to take the i value that we had before, right? Just so that I know that this is going to be relative to the first one. And then we're going to be outputting i2, right? So this is a modification of that. Let's copy this i2 and paste it into our x and y values. So now what we have is a new value here that's completely separate from the first time we're working on a different thing here and we're using our x and y to create a new circle great 
if I had my attribute math here, the multiply set to three, for example, now what happens is we go around the circle three times. Our The wavelength, right, is instead of two pi, it's now um, six pi, right, two times, uh, three times that. If I just add this to my previous one, right, so let's rename this one to small, and I'm just gonna add them together, add big and small. So shift A, attribute, vector math, that to add at the moment, let's change the A to small, B to big, and the result is the position. Okay, nice. If I change my multiply value here, then you can see that we start to get um, something going on. It, at the moment it's really angular just because we don't have enough vertices, so let's change it up to something big like 2000. And there we go, nice higher resolution. So it's already looking pretty cool just, just with the two circles, right? Just adding two circles together. What I now want to do is actually scale my second circle, my second, uh, the small one here. I want to scale this down to make a different radius. So by default, radius is one. If we add a scale on here, and we're gonna scale small, and we're gonna to output to small again. So now you can see as I increase this scale value, we change the size on here. So that is super useful. Right now we're just coming around lots of times. This is basically your spirograph, right? So if I had more of these, let's say I was going around 50 times, and I wanted this to be something like this. You can see stuff's going on there. It looks pretty cool, it looks pretty nifty. You can do loads of different stuff with this already just with circles or you know you can start adding stuff other stuff layer this up even further and do some interesting things what i want to do is i actually want to reverse the direction of the second circle so when i set this to four multiply by four then we're getting something close to a circle so that's slightly confusing let's change that so i'll take an input value this is going to be our number of sides like so. And let's go with three at the moment. So if I want this to be like a triangle, then three sides. So I need to add one to make this correct. So let's add one and then plug that in. So there we go. That's just a little bit more readable now. So with this set to three, how do I change the way the circle looks? Because at the moment, if I change the scale, it's just doing the spirograph thing either way. And what I actually need to do is I need to reverse the direction of this second circle, reverse the small direction. So if I do that, right, instead of using add here, I'm actually gonna use a multiply add. So let's go multiply by minus one, and we're gonna add one, right? Multiply by minus one, add one. And now you can see that we've reversed the circle. We have this sort of triangle shape, a little bit squished, right? And you can change how squished it is with our scale. Now, this is what I was saying about it being an approximation, because you can't easily, I mean, you can, if you layer this up again, then you use uh, kind of a different amount of these sine and cosine things, then you can definitely create a much more accurate shape. But for now, I think this works. I mean, it works for what I need it for anyways. Hopefully, if you're creating shapes, then this will work for you as well. However, you can see that as I increase this, then actually we need to change our scale value down. There's a way for us to kind of sort of automate this within within reason. So let's change this down to two so that we should have a base scale line. So now if I have my scale set to one, then we have a straight line. So with a size of two, we have a straight line at one. And if I increase this to three, then we need to reduce this. So it's around about half now. There's a little bit of a rule here that takes us pretty close, right? So utilities math node, we can take our side count. So when we had two sides, we wanted it to be a value of one output at the end for our scale. And when it was three sides, we wanted it to be a scale of half. If we subtract one from our sides, then instead of three, it's gonna be two. And instead of two, it would be one. And now we can do uh, one over that, right? Another node, divide, put our subtraction to the bottom and we put one on the top. So now we have one over our sides subtract one. So one over two minus one is one over one, which is one, which is what we want for our line. And one over two is how we want these. So you can see that we now have sort of an adjusted thing. And if you wanted to have a little bit more control on that, then you can just change that divide value. So depending on how kind of pinched you want those corners, you can change that. And obviously the higher you go, the more that works out. If you set it to zero, then you get a circle again. So there we go. That's kind of how to make, well, how to make a spirograph for starters. We can go a little bit higher on here and then we can change our divide value, right? You know, you can make a spirograph like this. You can make some really interesting shapes. This is all how we, how we work with making shapes. If you have a number range, right? If you're coming from Sverchok, 
then this will make a lot of sense. If you're coming from Grasshopper, this will make a lot of sense. You take a number range at the beginning, you do some math to it, and that allows you to create a new, completely custom position, which is super useful. You can actually do a whole lot with that. And yeah, so I'm showing this because I just want more people to do it. Basically, I want to see what cool stuff people make and get inspired by what people can do with it. So hopefully that helps. Sign, cosine, and then that's your position. And uh, yeah. Thanks for tuning in. I hope this was useful and informative and I will catch you next time.